5, John chapter 5, amen, that's the book that's right after Luke, in the New Testament, hallelujah, John chapter 5, everybody got it, say amen, amen, amen. if you're still looking for it, say I'm trying to find it, <laughs> hallelujah, and if you didn't bring your Bible, say oh me, <laughs> Always a good thing to bring your Bible to church. Yes. Amen? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know we got the Bible on the wall now. <laughs> but you know what? It's still a good thing to have it in your hand. Too. Yes, sir. Yes, Amen. Sir. Hallelujah. Me and my wife, that's been a practice of ours for years and years and years. Amen. Now I bring it in a different form, but I still bring it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. John chapter 5, you got to say Amen. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, hot, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whoso were then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Huh. Long time. And Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? Hmm. A good question. The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. Amen. And we're going to begin with verse 1. Ezekiel 47, 1. Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. Behold, water is issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate, by the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. And he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand. And it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen. Waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to preach just for a little while from this thought. Step into the water. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just ask the Lord to help us tonight. My God, I thank you. Lord, I love you. God, I thank you for your blessings to us. Lord, I worship you, oh God. And thank you, Lord. I ask you to help me tonight, God. Lord, touch me right now, God, and help me to follow your spirit, God. Help me to do a good job in a short time. God, we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Several years ago, actually back when I was just a kid, it's been several years ago. Sister Driscoll's had a lot of years. I guess I better get ready for that. Amen. I would go to the local creeks and the local local river swimming. I mean, now the Sabine is a crazy river. It's a crazy river. It's got a sandy bottom and a, has a very strong current. And so... It's always changing. You can go out one week and go into that river and wade out halfway across the river and it won't be no more than knee deep. In fact, we walked all the way across it down in Sabine Sands. My wife and I have before 
all the way across it. And it would be knee deep. Amen. But the very next day, you go right back out to that same spot, step off in a hole after about three foot out and, and drown. Amen. So it was a very, very treacherous river. And we would go swimming there. And I had an older cousin, Buster. And uh, he would come out. And uh, his boys were my age. And so we would all go swimming out there in that river. And he would go out and he would wait with a pole, with a cane pole out. He would feel around and he would finally mark, put that pole in the ground out there, drive it down in the sand. And then he would move down a little further. He'd just start walking back and forth with that, another pole and make sure the area was clear and then drive a second pole in. And then that was the boundaries that we were allowed to swim in. Now we were careful not to stray out of that marked area, amen, because we knew how treacherous the river was and if we got outside the boundaries, amen, it could be death. In fact, there's a lot of people that have drowned uh, in that river over the years because of that, amen. We weren't about to get out of the boundaries. Yes, sir. Amen, we knew uh, where the boundaries were at but we were not afraid to swim in those waters no matter how dangerous the river was because the boundaries were set for us and we knew, amen, it would be a safe zone for us to swim in. Amen. So in our text, Jesus has actually come up to the pool of Bethesda. There was a lot of folks laying around that pool. It wasn't just one guy laying there on the porch. The Bible said it had seven porches and I don't know how huge the porches were. And I don't think, I don't think one person could claim the whole porch to himself. I guess he could, but he'd probably have to fight over it. Amen. So there was probably quite a few people there on the different porches waiting for the moving of the water. Amen. I've often said that if I was one of those guys waiting on the water to be stirred, I probably would be sitting right beside the pool. Amen. I might have a foot dangling over in it or something all the time, you know. I, might, I would probably be there and have my foot in there so long that it would shrivel up and, you know, have all them little wrinkles and stuff on it that you get when you stay in a bathtub too long. And so Jesus comes by. Amen. Uh, all these guys that were there, everybody that was there at that pool was waiting for just one thing. Amen. They were waiting for the water to be troubled. Amen. When the water was troubled, of course, the first one to step in was completely healed, no matter what his disease was. And when Jesus arrived, there was this guy whom Jesus probably had seen many times in passing by that pool. Even as a youngster growing up, he had probably passed that pool many times. And he was passing by that way this time. Now, the man had been in that condition for 38 years. I want you to look what Jesus asked him. <laughs> Will thou be made whole? Or if you want to paraphrase it, do you want to be healed? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, here's a guy that for 38 years has sat by the pool. And look at the man's answer. Jesus asked him, would thou be made whole? He didn't ask him, do you want me to put you in the pool? Come on. Hallelujah. He said, would you be made whole? But look at the man's answer to him. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step up down before me. So Jesus never offered to help him into the pool. The only question was, would you be made whole? Hallelujah. Since he had been there for 38 years, it's evident he had given up a long time ago actually trying to get into the pool. Yes, sir. He basically was a sightseer. Yes, sir. He was one that would sit on the bank. And, and I, I don't think that there was a particular time that uh, this angel troubled the water. I think it was just random. Amen. And... Uh, you know, it wasn't that God didn't want to heal everybody there, but that angel troubled the water, and they understood that the first person in the water got healed of whatever disease he had. Amen. So it was a good thing to be there. If you had a 
disease or a sickness in your body. But this man had stayed there for 38 long years. Amen. It probably claimed most of the porch that he was on to be his by this point in time. He had probably set up camp there. Amen. If he had had a tent and a Coleman stove, he probably had one. If they had such a thing back then. Amen. But he had been in that condition and in that place for 38 long years. Something about this man. He had given up long ago trying to get into the flow of the Spirit. But he had just simply accepted the fact that I'm just going to be a spectator. Hallelujah. Now, that's never been God's will for his people. Hallelujah. We need to understand tonight, it's never been God's will for us to just be spectators. Hallelujah. Amen. When we come to the house of God, oh, come on. Now, you know what Bethesda means, right? It means house of mercy. Hallelujah. So when you come to the house of mercy, Amen. It's important that we don't just come to be a spectator. Amen. It's important that we get into the flow. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important that we get into the trouble water. Hallelujah. It's important that we don't just come to church and take up space. Hallelujah. Hey, oh, come on. There's a song that's that way. We used to sing it when I was growing up and, uh, when I come to church, I don't just come to take up space. Hallelujah. I just warm it up. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I didn't come here tonight just to, to be a spectator. I came here tonight to be a participator. Hallelujah. I, I come to the house of God because I know that when I get there, there's going to be a moving. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's going to be some trouble water. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You know what? I wish I could predict to you or tell you that every service that we have, that the water is going to be troubling and you can get in here and you can get the blessings of God. It doesn't happen that way every, every service. Amen. But we come every service with an expectation. Hallelujah. The people that were gathered around that pool understood it was only trouble one time a year. But you know what? They kept coming anyway. Because they wanted to be there. They did not want to miss the movement of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, you need to come to the house of God. Expecting God's Spirit to move. You need to come to the house of God. Prepared that when the Spirit moves, I'll be able to go with the flow. Hallelujah. I'll be able to get into the water. I'll be able to get into the flow. Hallelujah. When it happens, I want to be there. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to miss it. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. John chapter 4, verses 21 through 24. Jesus is sitting on the side of a well. And there's a woman there with him. And he's talking to her. In verse 21, he says, Jesus says unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, Jesus tells her true worshipers will worship God. How? In spirit and in truth. You know, spectators just spectate. Hallelujah. They just show up to see what's going on. Spectators show up to see what other people are wearing. Hallelujah. Spectators just come to church because it's just something to do to get out of the house. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, my. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. But there are people that are true worshipers. They don't go to the pool to watch what's happening. They don't go to the pool and 
you sat around under the porch. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, come on. Amen. A long ago, they done passed me in a porch monkey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Long ago, they done made up their mind. I'm not just going to take up space. Hallelujah. But I'm going to go to the house of God. I'm going to go to where the Spirit's flowing at. Hallelujah. I'm not going to just sit on a porch somewhere and watch God move and everybody else get a blessing and me kind of not get anything. I'm coming to worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I want you to notice this. After Jesus tells her this, he turns around and repeats it again. God is a spirit. Oh yeah. Come on. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Come on. Look here, the emphasis here is not only on truth, but also on spirit. Yes, sir. Now. The word spirit is used twice in the scripture. Notice the first use of the spirit is capitalized because it's referring to God's spirit. All right. But the second use of the word is not capitalized because it's referring to our spirit. What Jesus is telling this woman is, is that when you really come to worship God, amen, you mess your spirit with his spirit. Hallelujah. Woo. You hear what I said? You mess your spirit with his spirit. Hallelujah. You, you draw him in to you. Amen. You pray until you touch him in the spirit. And his spirit will touch your spirit. Oh, come on, hear me tonight. And when he does, amen, you're going to worship him like you've never worshipped him before. Hallelujah. When you worship in the spirit. Hallelujah. I said when you worship in the spirit, you don't care who watches. You don't care who's looking. It don't matter how many of them are being spectators instead of participators. The only thing you can think about is I've got to get more of this. Hallelujah. Woo. I got to get in the water. I said I got to get in the water. <laughs> Hallelujah. My Lord, amen. We used to go down to the old creek by the west, old Caney Creek and old Quicksand Creek. Amen. We swam in both of those creeks. We didn't care. You know, they called it Quicksand. I was there all my life, and I've been all up and down that creek fishing. I ain't even sunk yet. Amen. <laughs> well, I don't know what they're talking about, Quicksand. It may have been something back in the day when they named that. Somebody may have fell in. Amen. But I want you to know, us boys, we gather up in that creek, a bunch of the boys from Bonware, we we had a little rope. We had climbed, somebody had climbed a tree long before I got there and tied this rope in that tree, big old rope. And, and, and man, we would, it was so stinking cold that on a hundred degree day in Bonware, Texas, sweat pouring down your, your brow, you'd go up there to get in that creek and your toes would touch that and you'd just like freeze. <sighs> it's so cold. It's so cold. And the other boys were out there. They were like, come on in, man. Oh, it's just cold, man. Yeah. Yeah, but once you get in, you get used to it. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I, I would grab a hold of that rope and I would run out and get it swung out as far as I could over that deeper part. And then when you got over the deep part, you just let go. Hallelujah. And you'd go down over your head. Oh, hear me tonight. I, I, I enjoy doing that. Amen. Because I, I knew that I was going to be in that water and it was going to be good. Amen. Everything on a hot day was going to be all right. But you know what? Sometimes we we do like the old boy that I carried with me one time, old Saint. He, he was my next door neighbor's grandson, and he lived with him. And, and that was his nickname was Saint. Saint he wasn't, but that was his nickname. <laughs> He's the kid I was telling you about that we used to build ramps for him because he wanted to be evil can evil, so we'd build the ramps. It wasn't good. He broke many a bite because of our ribs. <laughs> but, but a saint, and I nearly broke his neck a time or two, too. <laughs> but, but saint, he came out there one day with us, and, and we're all out in the swimming hole, and, 
He's still standing up there on the, on the beach, you know, and he's he's looking at us. We're all going, come on in, man. Uh, I just put my foot in that water. It's cold. That's why the rope's there. Get the rope and swing out over it and let go and just fall in. But there was something about the anticipation. And so Saint goes running off that cliff and he stretches that rope out as far as it'll go. And it swung way out. And I'm like, let go, Saint! He didn't let go. And he swung back. And I can see that tree coming straight towards him. Like, this ain't going to be good. Boom! <laughs> He just kind of slid down the tree and landed in the cold water anyway. So. I like it. it would have been a whole lot better if you just let go and come on in. See, that's where we get spiritually. Amen. There's a lot of folks that, that just, uh, hey amen, let me just dive into that. And they'll dive in head first. They don't care. And there's others of them that'll wade out into it. And they'll get the shivers for a little bit, but they'll finally get on out in the deep water. Amen. But there's others that they, they'll swing off the rope and just drop in, just plunge in. I gotta have it, man. But there's others that are just swinging out over it and saying, you know what? I, I really want it, but, but, but I just can't let go. Oh, come on, hear me tonight, what I'm telling you. Amen, you've got to get into the water. It's time that this church and this people learn how to come to church and get into the flow of the Spirit. It's time that we begin to reach out every service for the move of the Holy Ghost, for the move of the Spirit in our lives, personally, and in our church. Hallelujah. I want it to be such. That when a sinner walks in that back door, that cold chills went up his spine and he's spooked by what he feels. I don't want him to run back out. I'll have a little Wally back there to trip him. But I want him to come in and I want him to sit down. And when they come in and they sit down, I want the spirit to run up their spine and get them to realize, hey, this ain't like any other church I've ever been to. Hallelujah. Come on. It's time that you get out in the water. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Time that we worship Him in spirit. We've already got truth. We know that. We already worship Him in truth. We thank Him for truth. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I appreciate the truth. I can tell you the plan of salvation from memory, amen, because I've known this since a child. But can I tell you tonight, there's nothing like flowing into the Spirit. There's nothing like walking into the house of God and entering into the Spirit realm and going one-on-one -on -one with Him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sitting in the shadows, watching others in the spirit realm. He wants you to wait out. He wants you to get on the swing, drop off. He wants you to dive head first. However you want to get in, he don't care how you do it. He just wants you to do it. Hallelujah. Amen. All of us boys were out in the water. And if somebody came up and wanted to swim with us, we would say, come on, there's a rope, just grab it, come on in, or just dive in, just however you want to come in. It's fine. Come on in here. Yeah. And they may be a little bit apprehensive at first because it was really, really cold. But you know what? I watched them as one after another of them boys in Bond where new boys would come and they would swim with us and Man, after they had swam a while, amen, they said, this is really good. This is really nice, amen. On a 100-degree day, you're swimming in that water, and it's cold, cold. But you know what? We didn't want to get out once we got in. Hallelujah. 
time would pass so fast it would be two or three hours before we would get out and then somebody would have to coerce us to get out you know hey it's starting to get late toward dark a little bit and we've got to be home before supper our mamas won't let us come back and so we had to get out but when we got out amen it was not because we wanted to get out it was because we had a day a schedule to get out but can I tell you it's not that way with God you can come and you can get into the spirit realm and you can walk in the Holy Ghost and you can stay in the spirit you can leave this house with the spirit on you and go to your house and continue to worship God and take this home with you hallelujah we couldn't get enough of it Brother West, if I went out one day a week, I went out five days a week. Unless Mama said, no, you got something else to do today. Which I, you know, winter, summertime, I didn't have much to do. Help my dad in the garden sometime early in the morning, sometime late in the evening, I'd help him pick tomatoes or plow this or pull weeds or whatever he wanted me to do. Amen. But the rest of the day was mine. And that creek was calling. And I think, well, I'll grab my cousin and we'll go down there. But we wouldn't be the only ones when we get there. Amen. There would already be boys in there swimming. They had been there a whole lot longer than we was. Amen. But you know what? The, the desire was there. Amen. After you had done it one or two times, there's a desire there. I've got to keep going back. I've got to keep going back. Amen. Oh, come on. Hear me. When you, once you have talked to the Lord and once you have walked into the spirit world, yeah. Hear what I'm saying? Yes, once you have walked in the Spirit, once you have got past your flesh and you have prayed and you have worshipped God in the Spirit, there's going to be a desire in you that says, I can't stop with just one service. I'm going to do this. And I'm, oh, come on. I'm going to seek it every service. I'm going to seek it every time I come to the house of God. Oh, come on, hear me today. You can seek it at your own home. And get blessed there too. Just wait till you get to church. Right. Hallelujah. Now, all right. In the scripture text we read in Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw waters coming out of the house of God. They were coming from under the altar and were flowing down the side of God's house on the east side. The angel had a line in his hand and he measured a thousand cubits, and the waters were only ankle deep. That's where lots of saints are dwelling. That's the ones that ain't dwelling on the bank, that is. Well, I don't know about this stuff. This is pretty cold. You know, that's kind of like old Saint. Saint, he ain't. Amen. When you got out there, you begin to wade in that water. And it got ankle deep. You'd be like, ooh, that's really cold water. I don't know if I want to get in this. Huh? But then he measured a thousand cubits more. This angel took the line and measured another thousand cubits. And he, Brother West, he got, he just walked on out in there. And it was knee deep. Woo! And the next thing you know, he walked on out and measured another thousand cubits. Let me tell you the story. There's a black couple. Finally. Uh, like an uh, oil company came to him and said, hey, we're putting oil well on y'all's property. And uh, yeah. you're going to get royalties off of it. They didn't have a clue. You know, they were, they were uh, they'd been pretty much done with life. They were getting old. And, you know, he was probably, an old man, probably 66 or so. Yeah. And, uh, And his wife was probably a old woman, 25 or so. Yeah. But he, he come in one day and he said, honey, he said, now, we, we done, you know, we done made all this money off this oil well and we've I built you a new home and, you know, I got you a new car. And he said, is there anything else? What can I do for you? You know, we're getting close to the end of life and we ain't never had all this, but we got it now. And 
I would really like to be a blessing to you. What can I do for you? She said, you know, I was flipping through one of them Life magazines the other day, and I saw this article about where them women is taking milk baths. And I'd like a milk bath. He said, I think we can make that happen. So he goes down to the local dairy, and uh, he's talking to the guy in there. He said, uh, Mom, I need some milk. And the guy said, how much milk do you need? He said, I don't rightly know. He said, uh, my wife was wanting to take a milk bath. And he said, well, how much do you need? I don't really know. He said, okay, would you like that pasteurized? He said, no, no, no. Hip deep will be deep enough. She can splash it up from there. <laughs> and an angel measured a thousand more, and it was hip deep. But he didn't stop and splash it up from there. Instead, the, the angel measured another thousand cubits. And, and, and Ezekiel said, this time, it was a river. Woo! <laughs> the Bible said, rivers of living water. And Ezekiel said it was swimming water. Woo <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, it's over your head deep. Ah, but you got to be willing to get in it. You got to be willing to get in it. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to make sure, amen, that you're ready and you're willing. Oh, come on, I, I, I'm not going to be satisfied with sitting on the porch. I'm not going to be satisfied with sitting up on the bank and watching everybody else get in. I'm really willing and able, amen, to jump in head first. I'm going whole hog. I'm going to go for everything that I can get out of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want a blessing. When I come to the house of God, I don't want to sit on the bank. I want to step into the water. Hallelujah. Woo. So we can't be happy with a hip deep blessing. You ain't going to splash it up. Hallelujah. That, that, that kind of rings a bell. You Anybody ever hear of a splash over blessing? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. You know what that is, Brother West? That's when you go to church and you hadn't prayed, you hadn't touched God this week, and you go to church, and old sister so and so over here, she got to church early tonight, and she had a good prayer meeting, and you came in late, and you came up, and you sat down, and the Holy Ghost got to moving, and old sister so and so over here sitting kind of close to you, and she begins to dance in the Holy Ghost. Woo! And while she's a dancing, all of a sudden you feel something on you. Yeah. You're getting a splash over. You didn't deserve that. You didn't work for that one. Oh, Hallelujah. But you take advantage of it anyway. Yes, right. If you're smart. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. But the next time you come, you need to be ready. Oh, right. Amen. The next time you come, it may be you that God wants to bless it. Yes, Amen. It may be you that God wants to drop that blessing on so that you can be the one who gets out in the aisle and cuts a rug. And while you're doing it, amen, the whole house comes down just because you yielded to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I am thoroughly convinced. I've been in this all my life. And I'm thoroughly convinced that if you want a move of God, you let one person, one person, Get in the spirit. Right. Yes, sir. Ooh, it can change the whole thing. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Jesus. I kind of like I told you. I think I told you that story before. Good, I'm tell it to you again. Hey, man, it's not in my notes. But my dad, we were back in the in the seventies. Excuse me. Back in the seventies, we were preaching, and uh. Mississippi, South Louisiana, all over Louisiana, all over Mississippi. And uh, it was still during the time when, in fact, they had just killed uh, three civil rights workers that were there uh, helping the black people. And, and they went missing. 
And uh, they finally found their bodies in a dam that they were building out there. And so it was during that time, and uh, it was very volatile. And, and we were in Carthage, Mississippi, and, 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 and Brother Roberts, my, my dad's good friend who was the pastor there, we preached there many times over the years. And, and uh, so we were there, and uh, he said, hey, he said, Brother Driscoll, I've got something. He said, I know that you preach in a lot of black churches in Texas and Louisiana. I said, he said yes, sir. He said, I, I enjoy it. You know, black people know how to worship. If you ain't in the spirit in a black church, when you go in, you will be before you leave. Because they're going to make sure. I, I, yeah. I've seen them. Hallelujah. Some old white person go up in there and they kind of doing this little halfway, you know, praise the Lord. You know. One of them old black suits come, woo, come over there and just grab you by the arm, take you with them. You're going to dance, you're going to shout, you're going to do something. Amen. You ain't going to leave like you came. They're going to make sure. And, and, and so we, we get to this black church and it's, it's just me and my mom and my dad and brother and sister Roberts. And, uh, in fact, I don't think Brother Sister Roberts even came this night. It was just me and my mom and dad. And we, of course, we stuck out like sore thumbs. You know? And, and here we are. And I, I, man, I love, I love black churches. I love black people. They know how to worship. Yes, my God. They'll jump in the pool when the water ain't even flowing. <laughs> and splash around until it gets to flowing. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And, and, and so, me and mom come and we, we find us a seat. There's a, there's a we're looking for a seat. I mean, it's a house packed, and we're looking for a seat. And we finally spot a seat over here on the left hand side. There's a little vacancy there. So we, we, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And we take our seat, and all these people are looking around at us. I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, I know they like white folk. They got to. But that wasn't it at all. About 45 minutes into the service, Pastor said, now the choir is going to sing. Guess where we was at? <laughs> Everybody around us stood up. I looked at my mom and said, I think we had just become choir members. <laughs> she said, I ain't singing. <laughs> I don't even know this song, first of all. And I sure can't sing it like they can sing it. I said, well, I'm going to stand up. I ain't going to just, you know, I don't know. Uh -uh. So I stood up and I faked it. <laughs> I didn't know the song either, but I faked it. But I don't want you to know this. Amen. Uh, that choir began to sing. And they don't stand still when they sing and they do this number or some number. They do it a number anyway. And if all of a sudden the Holy Ghost began to flow across that place and people began to jump and dance. And, and man, the whole choir come unglued and they were going every which way and I went with them. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. You, you got to understand, amen, because I came there expecting the move of God because I had been to black churches many times. And we're in the most volatile era of the Mississippi. And we're in the most volatile location in Mississippi, in northern Mississippi. Just 30 miles down the road is where they had killed those three civil rights workers. And we come out of church that night and got in our car. And as we're pulling out, we saw a truck with a long antenna on it with two white guys sitting in it. And they got behind us and followed us all the way to town. And my dad swerved up and down streets in town trying to lose them and they followed us all up to, to town and we finally went back to Brother Robert's house and they they, they stopped at the driveway and then they took on off. Amen. But every time we'd go into Mississippi after that, they would meet us at the River Bridge. They always knew we were coming. I don't know how. But they did. But you know what? We never let it phase us. We went back to that church many times. Hallelujah. 
Every time they would be there watching us when we come out. But you know what? We had some church up in there. Hallelujah. Amen. Because those people didn't go to be spectators. They went to be participators. They went there for a reason. Boy, I love to go there. You know why? Because I knew every time I good went, I was going to get a blessing. Hallelujah. I wasn't going to leave without being blessed. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, hear me. I wasn't going to settle for just dead, dull, dry church because that's not what God's desire is. He wants us to step out of our realm. He wants us to get off the porch. He wants us to step into the water. Amen. One more. And I'm going to shut in. I got about 13 more pages of notes to think. Don't laugh. Bro. I might continue on. <laughs> One night, and Jesus is, one evening, Jesus has just got through doing this great, huge miracle. 5,000 men, plus women and children. Yes, sir. Not just 5,000 men. We always just bark, you know, stop at the 5,000 mark. No, plus the women and children. Yes, sir. And Apostles said, hey, you know, they've been here all day. And they hadn't had anything to eat. Jesus looked at them and said, well, feed them. <laughs> what would you do? Same thing they did. Doc, I ain't got but a dollar and a quarter. How much you got, Pete? I got 50 cents. All together, the collection come out to be $2.25. And what is that with so many people? I mean, even if we could get into town to, to Walmart, you can't buy enough food there for 5,000 people plus the, 5, men plus the women and children. They haven't ate all day long. They're going to be starved and hungry. So Jesus had done the miracle. He, 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 took, he said, look around and see what you find. They came back and said, well, we got one little sack lunch here. That's all we got. Okay, what is it? Well, it's five loaves and two fishes. Uh, you got to understand, this little boy had been there a while. So he may have already been munching on that stuff. Think about that. Them five loaves might have had a bite or two out of them. Uh, and them fish might have just been skeletons. <laughs> but they brought them to Jesus. And he said, and they said, but, but what is this among so many? Well, who are you talking to? Who are you expecting to get your blessings from? Mm -hmm. Walmart ain't going to do that. Huh. No. You, you ain't going to go down to the nearest uh, fish store down here and buy enough fish to feed all these people. No, $2.50. So where's it coming from? Well, we just got, you know, just got a little bag here. Let me see that. So he just prayed over it and blessed it. He said, here, reach in that bag and get some food and start passing it out. Lord, they kept reaching in that bag and food just kept coming out. Over and over and over and over and over again until everybody there was fed. And in fact, they were so fed that they had extra left over. And they picked up 12 basket loads of, I don't know what size basket it was, but they were probably pretty good sized baskets. Picked up 12 baskets of fragments. That meant one for each apostle. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then they get on the boat. Jesus said, I want you to get on that boat. Head on out of here. I'll catch up with y'all. And then he goes up onto a mountain to pray. And they're, they're going along. Everything's going good. And all of a sudden, the wind begins to get boisterous. And then Brother West, there's a little lightning flashing here and there, and thunder beginning to pop around, and uh, Peter's like, ah, we probably need to get on over there to the shore, don't y'all make it? Yeah, I think so, and so the Bible said they, they began to row, and they were toiling in rowing. It, you ever you ever been in a boat when the wind's blowing? I remember one time my wife and I fished a tournament, and I believe it or not, she can fish. And I had a little... Okay, don't laugh, all right? I, I got a metal, 14-foot metal boat, 
a little Little John boat, and I bought a Yamaha motor and put on it. That motor was this big. It's a three horse. I was launching it one day in Sam Rayburn, and uh, you know, I'm all happy with my boat. It gets me where I want to go, you know. I'm backed up there and put my little boat in the water, and uh, she's standing there holding the line, you know, holding on to the boat. I go park the trailer. I come back, and there's this woman pulls up in a truck beside me with a dually, Brother West, and she starts backing this humongous bass boat down in there with this huge 150 horsepower Yamaha engine. And you know what she did? She pushed her boat off the trailer right beside mine. And she looked back at my yellow Yamaha and she goes, how cute. <laughs> wow, talk about a slap in the face. I said, thank you. I think it is too. Oh <laughs> but but my wife and I were out on Sam Rayburn Lake. Now Sam Rayburn Lake is kind of like Galilee. It can be perfectly still when you go out, and without warning, because of the way it's situated, just kind of like like Galilee. It's not mountains around it, but there's a lot of trees and stuff around it, and it just kind of funnels this wind and stuff in. And just without warning, these storms can blow in, and so. We're out there fishing for crappie. We're in a crappie tournament. And we ain't seen the first one yet. And I got my little fish finder going. And I'm, man, there's a whole school of fish right here. These have got to be crappie. And it, we're off a point and, and then crappie gather off points, in case you didn't know that. And they gather other places too. But we thought they could probably gather off of points. So. We're off this point, and, and there's just a whole pile of fish down in there. And so we're we're trying to catch these crappie, and we ain't pulling up crappie. We're pulling up everything but crappie. We're pulling up grinnel. We're pulling up catfish. We're pulling up grinnel. We're pulling up, I don't know, a lot of trash fish. And so finally, all of a sudden, the wife said, uh, this wind sure has come up a little bit, hasn't it? And I noticed, you know, the waves are getting a little bit higher and they're flipping up against the boat, you know. And then all of a sudden I hear boom. She said, that was thunder. I said, we need to get off the lake. I've only got a three horse. I don't have that 150 horse. So I pull that little starter rope and boom. Here we go. And I'm going along there, and the wind starts blowing from towards the front of the boat. So I could I could tell you, I could relate to what was going on with the apostle. I wasn't rowing, but I was not going. <laughs> I, my little three horses wide open. You know, and I said, I don't think we're going very far. She said, I, we've been sitting by that tree right there for 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, I think the wind's a little too strong. So we, we kind of started zigzagging back and forth across until we made it back to where we were going. But the, the apostles are toiling and rowing and not getting anywhere. The wind is so strong that they're not, they're, they're trying to get to the shore, but the wind's blowing from the shore. So as much as they're rowing, they don't even have their sails up because it's going to blow clear across the lake. So they just got there just rowing, trying to get, and nothing's happening. You, do, do you ever come to church and, and you lift your hands and you don't feel like anything's happening? Yes, sir. You know what the deal is? You haven't let Jesus in the middle of the mix. All right. yes, sir. And so they're toiling and rowing and nothing's going on. And all of a sudden, somebody cries out, there's a ghost! And they looked, and Peter said, no, that's not a ghost. I think that's Jesus. Now, let me just show you something, how, how, how faith should work when you come to church, okay? And so Peter looks out, and he goes, if that's you, Jesus, bid me come to you. And this apparition says, Come. Thank you, 
So Peter gets out of his comfort zone. Notice what he does. He gets out of his comfort zone and he slides off the back of the boat and his feet hit the water and he stands up and he's totally amazed. But he sees Jesus out there and he starts walking towards him. And all of a sudden, the Bible said that the wind was boisterous and that got his attention off of Jesus. He got to pay attention to the surroundings. And when he did, he sank. Now, now you know, we get this picture of, of Peter going, help me, Jesus. And he just kind of like slowly slapped. I don't know about you, but I've sunk in water before and you don't sink like that. Happy. Step out on water out of a you know, off the side of the, of the bank into a creek and see if you just kind of slowly go down in the water. You, you go, <laughs> you know, you're, all you're going to see is bubbles coming up from where you was. Yes, sir. So Peter, when he realized he was going down, he hollered, help me! <laughs> About that time, he went, come on! And he had his hand up and Jesus grabbed his hand and he came up out of the water and he stepped back on the water. Amen. But I want you to know what happened next. I want you to show you something. Jesus looked at Peter. Now Peter's the guy who got out of the boat. He's the guy who got out of his comfort zone. He's the guy who was walking on water like Jesus was. But because he sunk, Jesus scolded him and said, Oh, ye of little faith. I think it took quite a bit of faith to get out of the boat to me. Yes, sir. But what Jesus was trying to, to show him was, you were walking towards me. If you had not let your eyes get distracted by the things around you going on. Mm. If you would have kept looking at me and looking for me, hallelujah, you might not have seen me through the storm. But if you would have kept looking at me and quit worrying about what was happening around you, you would have come to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The rest of them sat in the boat watching the deal. They chose to be spectators. They were the guys that wrote about it. <laughs> Peter's the one that did it. But guess what? Uh, one of the scriptures says that they both walked back to the boat. Yeah. They both walked on to the water. Back together. He got in the boat. Hallelujah. You got to understand that God's desire is when you come to church. You don't come to be a spectator. Hallelujah. We've got to get beyond the point, church, of just coming to church and being spectators and just kind of saying, Lord, bless me if you can. No, no, no. You've got to come expecting Him and you've got to come expecting to get out of your comfort zone and walk towards where He is spiritually. Hallelujah. And when you begin to do that, all of a sudden, your life is going to change. Your world is going to turn upside down. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost is going to get on you. You're going to worship like you've never worshipped before. You're going to dance. You're going to shout. You're going to run the aisle. You're going to do things you never have thought possible. Hallelujah. Or you're going to sit on the porch. And pull your little robes around you. And say, Jesus, ain't nobody going to put me in the water. You know what? That's the truth. Ain't nobody going to put you in the water. If you're going to get there, it's going to be of your volition. It's going to be because you choose to. Hallelujah. If you get into the spirit realm, it's going to be because you said, you know what? I'm tired of dead, dry, dull, boring church worship. I'm going to the house of God. I'm not going to stop worshiping until I get in the spirit. Come on. I don't care if you mess up the whole church service where I don't even get to preach. That will be fine with me. If you will just follow the Holy Ghost. If you will just get into the spirit. 
spirit realm and just walk with him and let him bless you and let him anoint you and let him touch you. You know what will happen? It will spread like wildfire across this church. Hallelujah. Amen. Just step in the water. Hallelujah. So, Jesus looked at that guy and he said, hey, rise, take up your bed and walk. Woo! You, you ain't willing to, you know, I've got a different kind of water I'm going to put you in. <laughs> You don't have to worry about that one over there. That's just an angel. Hey, you're dealing with God in the flesh right now. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. This is greater than the angel touching the water. I don't even have to have water. Watch this. Rise. Take up your bed and walk. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You got to understand. Amen. That's what God wants to do here. Yes. Right here. Right here. Why don't we just stand right now? Why don't we just give him everything we got in worship? God, we love you. I thank you for your presence here tonight, God. God, I worship you with all of my heart, with all of my mind. God, with all of my strength, with all of my soul, God, I give you everything right now, Lord. God, I come to you tonight, Lord. I'm tired, God. Lord, I'm sick and tired of coming to church, Lord. I, I, I don't want to come to a dead, dry, dull service. I, I want to come and I want to find your presence. I want to walk in the Holy Ghost in this house. I'm not satisfied, God. I'm not satisfied. I'm going to come to the house of God. I'm going to worship you like I've never worshipped you before. Tell it. I'm going to worship you like I've never worshipped you before, God. I'm going to give you everything I've got. Several years ago, I was working for a guy by the name of Bill Wetz. He had a sign company, and him and him and Johnny Clutch had a sign company in Lufkin, and I was working for them. And uh, one day, he told me, he said. My mom's coming up. She lived in South Texas, around New Braunfels. And I said, okay, great. He said, I want you to meet her. She's a unique woman. I said, what do you mean unique? He said, she's 74 years old. I said, okay. I love 74 year old ladies, why? He goes, no, 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 she's coming up. And she's not just coming up here to visit me. What's she coming up here for? Triathlon, what? A triathlon. What's that? He said, she's going to swim a mile in Lake Nacogdoches, and then she's going to get out of the water, and she's going to run the 10 or 15 miles it is back into town, and then she's going to get on a bicycle, and she's going to ride the five miles through town. And she said, before you old? Yes, sir. You know, most 74-year-olds do good to get out of bed. <laughs> you know? I'm only 66, and every morning that I just think, oh, Lord, it's morning. <laughs> what happened to the night, Jesus? And, and, and I, I, this woman comes be bopping in the door. I didn't know her. I never met her. And uh, she was about like Sister Laura, her skinny, you know, skinny little gal. And she comes be bopping up in there. And, Walked over and said, Can I help you? She said, Who are you? I introduced myself. She stuck her hand out. So I stuck my hand out, you know, shake this, you know, you know, give her a little handshake. You know, she's an older lady, so I'm gonna give her a little soft handshake. She liked to crush my hand. I was like, You must be Bill's mom. <laughs> she's like, Yep. <laughs> How'd you know? Just guessing. <laughs> but you know what? Amen. She was, she was just as spry as she was bouncing off the walls. And, and, and she didn't come to see her son. I said, Bill's in his office, I think. She said, well, I didn't come to see him. 
you drove all the way from New Braunfels not to see your son? She said, no, I came to run this triathlon and he just happened to be here, so I'll see him while I'm here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it, it, it really impressed me. And I looked at myself. Of course, I didn't have this then. I was still on my tools, so I still worked. You know, I'm climbing, climbing up billboards, you know, 120 foot up, and, you know, fighting wash nests big around and all that kind of stuff, you know, just to paint a stupid sign. And uh, here she was running triathlon at 74 years old. I felt like about this tall, you know. And like, she's like, you do any running? Yeah, not unless the dog's after me. Chihuahua. Chihuahua. <laughs> That's it. Amen. But you know what? It's because her mind was made up. She can still, you know what Bill told me? He said, she tries to get to the Boston Marathon every year. And, and, and then she's 74. He said, oh yeah, she's been doing that for 30 years. Are you kidding me? He said, no, she runs marathons all the time. That's no deal for her. Wow. I said, is this her first triathlon? He said, I think maybe her 30th or 35th or something. <laughs> Man, you know what? By the time I swim that mile, they'd be doing uh, CPR on me. Yeah. I'd be laid out on the beach. <laughs> but you know what? It was because she had made up her mind way back under somewhere. I'm not going to just sit on the beach and be a spectator. Mm -mm -mm. I, I've watched them people swim that mile in the lake. I've watched them come out and run all the way into town and get on them bicycles and ride all the way through town. I've watched them do that. So I, I, I've got to be a participant. I've got to get into it. Hallelujah. Now, I ain't encouraging you to go do a triathlon. I'm sure not. So don't look at me. Okay? But I want us to do some triathlons in the spirit in here. I, I want to see it. When we come to church, I want to see somebody running laps around here. Woo, hallelujah. I want to see somebody doing calisthenics over in the corner. Hallelujah. I, I want to see somebody that's got your mind made up. I'm not going to be a spectator any longer. No, 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 no. That's too much good stuff going on here for me. Hallelujah. I've got my mind made up. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him right now. My God, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I give you glory and honor and praise. I worship you, O Lord. I magnify your name, O God. Hallelujah. 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 My Lord and my God, I love you, Jesus. I give you glory and honor and praise. I worship you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, he's done too much for me. For me just to come to the house of God and let it be a mundane experience. He's done too much for me. He brought me out. for the presence.